Okay, well, we, this is Christian Bible Chapel, and we're going to be here for our Wednesday night Bible class. And what we're going to do is finish our, let me, let me, let me, uh, our lesson. Let's turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 12. We're looking at spiritual gifts as we study uh, verses, uh, chapters 12, 13, and 14 in its combination, maybe in a sequence, but we're going to try and follow that path, All right? So, any questions, uh, feel free to ask, even if it's way in chapter 14, whether you're speaking on phone or um, YouTube or on Facebook, we ask you to type in your questions or to... Uh, Give us a shout out on page on our website page on Facebook, okay? All right, let's look to the Lord in prayer as we turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and we are at verse, we're at verse uh, 8. We're on verse 8, all right? Father, we thank you for the word of God, and we thank you for the truths of your word, and we pray that we will continue to delight in the word of God as true people of God, that we'll study to show ourselves approved, a person that needs not to be ashamed, help us through the power of the Holy Spirit rightly divide the Word of God. Govern us by your Spirit through your Word, and we thank you in Jesus' name, amen. Now, we already talked about last week how we have said that there is only one God, one Spirit, and as we saw in verses 4, 5, and 6, and 7, that it states, let me see, that there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. Now, Paul in Romans chapter 12, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 13, and 14, and in Romans, excuse me, 1 Peter, that's not a full list of all the gifts in the church. But the Spirit of God does not behave himself unseemly, and he's going to work the gifts through the believer. And those gifts is going to be governed by the Spirit of God. It's going to be governed by the Spirit of God. Okay? It's sad that we don't have too many, not only elders, but people within the church that has the gift of discernment. Um, the gift of discernment is the ability to recognize and see the working of the Holy Spirit um, in an individual within the church. All right? In the individual and within the church. And that is such lacking and that's why we find the phenomena of slain in the spirit, uh, the, the phenomena of shouting, dancing around under the power of the Holy Spirit so called uh, visions, signs, uh, palm reading, afterlife experiences, visitations from the dead, uh, seances, healings, and dreams are being advocated in the church and being taught in the church with no vindication or authorization from the scriptures. Now you may see this happening in the Old Testament because the scripture tells us in Hebrews chapter um, what is it um, 11 oh, excuse me let me let me get it uh, God in sundry times and diverse manners he spoke to the fathers by the prophets but now in these last days he speaks to us through his son all right and uh, the scriptures lets us know that God did at one point uh, spoke to the fathers, you know, and uh, through prophets, through signs, through dreams, through wonders, but he doesn't do it anymore. And that's what the scripture teaches. So we're going to look at such scriptures as uh, um, Mark chapter 16, 16 through 18, Acts chapter 2, and and the book of Acts chapter 8, and other passages of scriptures that deals with whether they're old or new, 
is there any warranty for the Christian to still rely on the supernatural ability to speak in tongues, the, uh, the phenomena of visions and dreams, seances, afterlife experiences. Now, what I mean by afterlife experiences, many Christians, so-called, are caught up in recognizing that people have died and come back and visit them. Or they can see, they can talk with the dead, which is seances and um, necromancy, as what is taught in the Old Testament. As, you know, And that was an abomination before the people of Israel anyway, talking to the dead or having any relationship or socialization with the dead. That was prohibited in the Old Testament times. Uh, can Christians, those who call themselves prophet, prophetess, do divine healing on their own or with the power of God? What about dreams? Are dreams authentic? Can we rely on dreams and visions? As in Job chapter 2, verse 28. These are some of the scriptures that we are going to look at that really, if you do not have a clarity and understanding of it, uh, the, the, the average Christian will begin to believe in practicing it. You have Christians believing and practicing in voodoo, uh, voodoo, as it started off, and now it's called voodoo. So we'll use the word voodoo instead of voodoo, in which it was originally spoken. And, 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 and candle lighting, vigils, and things like that. Should we trust in that? Should we believe in hexes and curses and dreams and visions and signs and slain in the spirit and palm reading and, and speaking in tongues as it is in church, uh, shouting and slain in the spirit, are these things authentic by the power of the Holy Spirit? So Paul is going to show us through these three chapters that we're going to study and, uh, and, and other parts of the Old Testament as well, that the Spirit of God does not behave himself unseemly. All right? Now, um, first of all, let's, as we, I told you to turn to 1 Corinthians 12, right? We end verse 8. But first of all, let's turn in our Bibles, put your uh, marker there, and turn, turn with me to uh, 1 John chapter 4. Let's look at 1 John chapter 4 first. All right. this, this is going to uh, talk, John is going to speak to us about discerning, how to detect. Discerning, detect the truth from error, fraudulent from genuine. 1 John chapter 4, starting in verse 1. All right. Let's look at that first. It says here, Beloved, believe not every spirit but try the spirits, whether they be of whether they are of God. Now, we are under the assumptions that the word spirit here is a ghost, is a demon working in a person. Though that is can be true, but here it is not talking about that because scripture is going to interpret itself. Let's read on. But let's start over. Beloved, believe not every spirit. But try the spirits whether they are of God because many false prophets. And so John is giving right there the meaning to the word spirit. False teachers, false prophets, false elders, false bishops. All right? that, the scripture interprets itself. See, what, 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 what we have been taught and have been grounded in and believing and we have accepted is ghosts and spirits in a person, you know. Now, whether a person stands there in a seance or in a daze or their eyes rolls around, roll around, or they start jumping up and down and wobbling on the floor, all right, that doesn't happen all the time. John is, is saying, how can we know the truth of the matter and discern between the spirit of God, a person, the third person of the Godhead, of the Trinity, in recognizing whether it is 
human flesh or man, a person. See, we're dealing with two personalities. Let me use that word, personality. Whether it's the Holy Spirit working in the church or whether it's a person. So John says, beloved, believe not every person, believe not every you know, prophet, believe not every teacher, believe not every elder. See, we are so accustomed that if anybody get on the social media, anybody on TV, and they start preaching, oh, they're of God. But this is not, this is not so. You got to try the word, you got to try the person by the, by the word of God, whether they be. Now, let's read on, because John is going to give us the full understanding of it. And we don't need uh, uh, any guessing about it, all right? He says, but try this person whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Many spirits are gone out into the world. All right? Now, number one, you can't see a spirit. You, you, you... You can know a spirit by his actions and his ways, but a spirit works through a person. So it has to be a person that you are designing or trying. As John is saying here, try the spirit. Try the person. Look at their character, what they are preaching, what they believe, how they are acting and behaving. Is it compatible to the scriptures, the gospel, the word of God? Is it? Then John says, if it's not, they are not of God. Let's read on. Hereby know ye the spirit of God. John says, now I'm going to tell you how you can know the person, the spirit of God. All right. Every spirit, John says, every spirit. It's every spirit, every person that confess. See, the thing is, you're not going to have in the church, in a prayer meeting, in a tarrying service, a spirit get up and saying, Jesus is not God. See, why? Because you can't see the spirit. You can't see a fallen angel. Okay, so when we see this in verse 2, it says, Whereby know ye the spirit of God? Every person, we have established that the word spirit is a person, it's a prophet, a false prophet, it's a true prophet, whether it, you got to de you determine or detect it. Every, every person that confess, and that's the TH on that word, that means it's a continuous in believing and confessing that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. So every preacher, any preacher, any elder, any pastor, any ministry, any church, any so-called prophet or so-called prophetess that does not confess that Jesus is coming to flesh is is is, is, is didn't come in the flesh is uh, is not of God. So, see, you have to understand that it doesn't mean verbatim that. Jesus came in flesh because you have a lot of false prophets that believe in the incarnation. So this is not talking about the incarnation. All right? It is not talking about Jesus being the son of God, which not many of them, all of them don't believe, but they have a head belief only. But what this is talking about is the full impact of the redemptive ministry, the work of Jesus Christ. That Jesus, see it says that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. It's, it's, it's beyond the incarnation. It's talking about the, the, the great, the work, the complete work of Christ. That he came to die for sinners, that he was buried, that was, he died and he was buried and he rose again. And the gospel concluded concludes that that whosoever believes in him should not perish that is that is the whole compass of what John is saying that the person
person will confess, will preach, will proclaim. This is what John is saying. If he does that, he is of God. See that? It says that. There it is. That Jesus Christ is come of the flesh. He, he, that person is of God. That spirit, that person is of God. Because there's a lot of spirits that's gone out into the world. And of course, because of our upbringing and our teaching, we assume that it's talking about different kinds of spirits and ghosts. The spirit of alcohol, the spirit of drunkenness, the spirit of sex, the spirit of molestation, the spirit of homosexuality, the spirit of smoking, and, and you just name it. And that's how people name all these spirits. No, no authentication from the scriptures, but they are labeled the spirit of this, the spirit of that, spirit, spirit, spirit of that. But here, John is not talking about that. For let's let me give you a good example. All what you have heard from me since just a couple of minutes now, you should be able to discern whether I am of God. Now. Two things, three things. If you're not able, three things. Number one, you're not, you're not an unbeliever. Two, you are a believer and you're not taught. And three, you are a believer and you have been taught. So you know better. And John mentions that in his epistle. He says, you, you know better. You know. But there are some that don't know who are Christians who are not being taught. And, 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 and that's, that's a great hindrance to them because they accept that prophet in, in, in Nigeria or they accept that prophetess and her husband in Kenya and say, hey, hey, that's, they are God. Look what they've done. And, and see, regardless of the miracles they perform, regardless of the outstanding ministry that they have, the great clout that they have upon them, the, no matter how big their ministry is, John is saying, try that person, whether they are of God. All right? Look at their character, look at their life, look at their behavior, look at them, and you see the impact of the preaching of the word of God will show in their behavior, their character, their actions, their ways, and much more. So John is saying, try the person, whether they are of God. Don't accept every person with a collar on, with a Bible in their hand, in the pulpit, preaching the gospel on TV, radio, and church. You have to discern and know truth. And the only way you're going to know the truth is that you have to sit under a man who has taught the word of God in that church so you can grow in the truth and know the truth. See, when Jesus says, ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free, it doesn't mean that that truth is going to smack out of heaven and just bam, right on you. You see, because it's not enough to stay at home. Some Christians feel that they, they don't have to go to church. They don't need to assemble together under our elders. They, they, they don't need the teachers. But you see, if that was the case, Ephesians 4, verse 10 through 16 would not be in, in this, in, Paul would not have put it there. You follow me? Let, me? let me show you what I'm saying. In Ephesians chapter 4, it says this, and let's see, let's look at verse 8. Wherefore he said, when he ascended up on high, he led captives, cap captivity captive, and gave gifts unto men. And that men is masculine. Verse 9. Now he that ascended, what is, he, what is it but he also descended into the grave, okay, descended into the lower parts of the earth, which is the grave. I don't know how they, how, see, we, we, we're going by 
translations and culture make up thinking that Jesus went to hell because it contradicts when the scripture says as Noah, Jonah, with three days and three nights in the belly of the whale, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the, in the earth, which is the grave. All right. Verse 10 says, He that descend is also he that ascended far above heaven, that he might fulfill all things. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists, this is Ephesians 4 and 11 now, and some pastors and teachers. For what purpose? What is it? Why, if, if we could just get saved, study, and, 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 and just stay home and not gather together as a, a flock, whether it's 2, 3, 8, 10, 12, 15, 100, 1,000, or whatever, the number, it doesn't matter. He says, he gave these gifts unto men for the purpose of, verse 12, for the maturing of the saints. That's what the word perfecting means. All right? Uh, for the work of the ministry. For the edifying of the body of Christ. So the church's job is to train the Christians, to get them into the word of God. See, this... This goes right back to Matthew chapter 28 and verse 20. Go ye into all the world and make disciples. All right? Make disciples. Teaching them all things as I taught you. Okay? This, this is Matthew 28 uh, verses 20. Go ye into all the world and make disciples. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy. And so this is the job of the elders in the church to baptize the true believers, to baptize people, to teach them the word of God. All right? True discipleship, the first course of true discipleship is getting that person saved. All right? And making disciples is going out evangelizing the lost, witnessing to them of the gospel of Jesus Christ. When they are converted, they gather in the church under their elders and they are taught the word of God. God uses one or two or how he, how he gives the gifts to each, each individual, back to 1 Corinthians 12, but some are given the gift of eldership, preaching, which is the men folk in the church. Some are given the gift of teaching in the church, the men folk in the church. Right. Of course, we do not have apostles and prophets now, because an apostle and a prophet is one who has been personally sent by Jesus Christ trained by Jesus Christ, called by Jesus Christ. The performance, the, per, the person himself called them. We, we haven't seen Jesus. No one has. We receive our calling through the power of the Holy Spirit. All right? Apostles and prophets didn't receive it like that. The apostles. Okay, so you got to be careful of that. So, so when John says that you need to try the person by whether they are of God or not, it's a combination of the Spirit of God that works through the Scriptures. So you just don't, let me see, let me look at a person and, 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 and watch them and see if they are of God. And see what kind of spirit they have. Oh, you got a demon spirit. You got a wicked spirit. Now that their behavior and their actions may be true if they are unbeliever, but if they are a true believer of Christ, they cannot be possessed by a, a, a demon or evil spirit. No true child of God can be possessed. They can be obsessed, O B E S S E D, but not 
P-O, possess. Obsess is a mental faculty in which you allow yourselves worrying and threatening and, and, and other things to trouble you to be bombarded and tempted by the devil in the case of his empire, his demon angels who works along with him. But we are, the scripture says, in 1 John 4, 4, resist the, well that's James 4. James says resist the devil and he will flee. Of course the scripture tells us in 1 John, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. So the discernment is a is 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 a lacking in the church today. And that's why we have the phenomena which we see in the church of slain in the spirit, all this phenomena of shouting and voodoo and spiritualism and witchcraft and seances and everything that has invaded the church and the church has labeled it as the spirit of God. Whereby know ye the spirit of God. Don't label everything of this, that's, that's, oh, that's the Spirit of God working in that person. You know. Then you, you, you might say, well, what if you go to a church service, a crusade, a revival, or, you know, and this guy is just pulling money out of the hat. He is, he is doing, he is healing people. He is actually, you know, doing things that is supernatural. Get away from there. Get away from there because it's not of God. Such are false apostles, deceitful workers, angels of light that's being generated and used by Satan. And Second Peter, Peter warns of this as well as Jude. They'll, they'll make merchandise on him. Right. Now, see... The point of discernment is, I think last week, if you review last Wednesday, I talked about how John MacArthur was saying how that uh, quote and unquote, because I'm not putting it all together, it's quote, that's why I'm saying quote and unquote, how that uh, a person uh, either came to him or knew, he knew or he knew of a person, quote and unquote, how that a person was in a certain church all their lives for 10 and had a booming ministry, but all of a sudden he left the church, disgraced the church, testified that he was glad not to be a believer anymore, and it was so sickening and hard, you know, to be a Christian, and he, he, he set up an altar and started serving, serving Buddha in his, and, 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 and doing all that kind of you know, stuff that they do to, to worship Buddha in that candle lighting and whatever they chanting and whatever they doing. But he's been in the ministry for 10 years. He's, and, and this is happening all across the world. What about those people? Well, the thing is that they never received Christ. They never got saved. They act apart. See, that's almost like we, we talked about it last week, Hebrews chapter 6. They were enlightened. They, they, they were moved. They were, they were blessed. They went, they, 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 but they never were true converts of the Lord Jesus Christ. Typical example, look at Judas. Judas healed people. Judas kept the money for the group. Judas um, discerned, Judas preached, <laughs> but yet Jesus says, have not I chose you twelve, and yet one of you is a devil. So the ministry doesn't phase God. The action and behavior of a person doesn't phase God. It does to us. We, we look at a, a growing ministry. We look at an outstanding preacher preaching and teaching. Oh, he, you know. But we, we fail to obey 1 John chapter 4, whether he be of God. Now, you notice that word, going back to 1 John, you notice that word, what I said, confesseth. 
the T H see that's one unique thing about the King James because the word it says in verse two, whereby know ye the spirit of God, every spirit that continues to confess that Jesus is coming to flesh. See, it's a continuance. I'm 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 going back to John chapter eight. All right, because I want to pull out something. And notice what Jesus let them know that it's a continuation. It's a continuation of being of, of his disciples. It's not a, it's not a two-day thing. It's not a two-year thing. It's not a 20-year thing. It's, it's a continuation of knowing Jesus, living for Jesus. It's a continuation then if you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. See, it's a continuation. It's not a thing that something you start and then saying, oh, well, whew, I'm finished with this. This, you know, and, and we see people, quote, quote, backslide. And we say, oh, they backslide. You know, they were saved, but they went back out into the world. Or they went out from us. Or they departed from the faith. Or they were saved, but they, they went back. Well, the scripture says they never were. See, we, we elaborate and we, we flourish on the word backslide. We give people antidotes and we give people a false sense of salvation by saying, oh, well, you were saved, but you was carnal, and you you backslid, and and we pat him on the back, and we say such and such and such, you know. Right? But we got to see what the scripture says. We, we got to understand what the scriptures is teaching here. And, and, and Jesus says that he spake these words, and 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 Jesus says, I'm looking at chapter 8 of John, he says, as he spake these words, many believed on him. See, this ain't the first time John says this. John said this in the second chapter. He says, many believed on Jesus, but Jesus says, I'm not trusting that. This is in John chapter 2 at the end of it. See, because many people have a head knowledge, have a mentality, a mental knowledge, a head knowledge, a flesh knowledge, but not a heart, a heart belief. They believe with their head. They believe with their flesh. They believe with their emotions and their feelings. That's why G Paul says, if thou shalt confess with thine mouth and believe in your heart. Let me finish this. John 8, 30. As, as he spoke these words, many believed on him. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then ye are my disciples. How, how plain can it get? The proof positive that you are a believer is your continuous in the faith. Sure, you're going to have some ups and downs and trials and tribulations. That's all of us. But you're going to continue. You're not just going to say, I give up. That's it. I'm going to serve Buddha. I'm going back to alcohol. I'm going back to my second wife and leaving my first wife. And I'm going to shack up. I'm going to commit, continue to do fornication, steal, lie, adultery, incest, and all. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm sick of it. I'm going away. You're not continuing. You can, you can accept the so-called concept backsliding. You can accept because the scripture is going to validate that you went out from them. That you left the faith. That you depart from the truth. See those words I just mentioned? Didn't, did not Paul says, in the latter days some shall depart from the faith. You never was in the faith. Departing from the faith means that you have a you, you you had a show, you were hypocritical, you pretend, you was enlightened, 
You heard the truth. You was moved by the truth. You was blessed by the truth. But the truth didn't seed itself into the heart. Well, you received the truth with joy, but you never received it from heart. Remember what Jesus says? The sower went forth to sow seeds, and some fell on the ground, and it, and it you know, didn't bring forth fruit. Let's continue what Jesus said in John chapter 8. They said, well, Jesus, we be of Abraham's seed. Now, there was a point in which Jesus says, unless you eat my flesh, now that's earlier, that's earlier. He says, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood. This is John chapter 6. So let's turn to that real quick. Here's another group. See, that, John 8 was another group. Here's John chapter 6, another group. When Jesus says, then Jesus says, verse 53, John 6, 53. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except ye eat the flesh of the incarnated God, Son of God, and drink my blood, you have no life. Well, ooh. No wonder Nero and all them in, in the Roman culture at that time say, you, you Christians are cannibalism. Y'all eating flesh and drinking blood. See how they took it physical, literal? Jesus was not even talking about that. He goes on in verse 54, Whosoever eat my flesh and drink my blood has eternal life. So what is he talking about? Eating the flesh is appropriating the flesh, which is the word. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. You're appropriating the word, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. You're receiving the word. You got saved. And you're fellowshipping and walking in the light. This is what Jesus says. By this you have eternal life. Now play that back again. Okay? Whosoever eat my flesh and drink my blood has everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. That's, that's, that's plain and simple. All right. Let me read on. Um, as he goes on, he says in verse 57, As the living Father has sent me, I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. See, this, I'm the bread. The bread that I'm going to give you, you're going to live forever. It's the word. It's the word of God that transforms the person. Even Peter says the seed is the incorruptible seed that gets into a person that, that, that takes place in a person's life through the power of the Holy Spirit that transforms them inside and calls them to live holy and righteous. And they will continue to do that. It's not 10 years. It's not 20 years. It's not 50 years. It's until Jesus comes back or until you die. It's a continuous. If you continue in my word, then ye are my disciples indeed. John 8, 30 and, and moves on. Now, Jesus kept saying this. Now, notice in verse 59. These things says he in the synagogue. There was a whole a lot of people there. And a lot of people had trusted Jesus. They believed in Jesus. See, there was a group that believed in Jesus, and then there was another group that believed in Jesus. Okay? It sounds humorous, right? Because, but really, there were two groups of people that believed in Jesus. You, you notice what, what John says. You, you notice what John says when he says, when Jesus said all of this. He, he, he quickly turned to those that believed in him. Okay. Now, but yet, among those, there were those who believed in him. It sounds crazy, right? Because you can believe in Jesus, believe in God, and not know him as your Savior. Here it is right here, verse 59. These things said he in the synagogue as he taught in, the, in Capernaum. 
Many therefore of his disciples, when they heard this, what is the disciple now? Uh, the, the word disciple means a follower. A true disciple is one who not only follows, but has received the truth, assimilated the truth, accepted the truth, believed the truth, living the truth, because the power of the regeneration of the seed of the Holy Spirit of God has been planted in them, and they know truth, and they are saved. But notice, just like there are some that believe, and some that believe, two groups, they were just the ones that believe in their head, in their emotions, following Jesus because of the bread of loaves and the fishes and the miracles. They follow because of what they see in their flesh. They follow him. They were disciples. This is why John uses the word here in verse 60. Therefore, many of his disciples, when they heard this, they say, this is a hard saying. Who can hear it? When Jesus knew within himself that his disciples murmured at it. See, now, this is the, the, the second group of disciples. This ain't, this ain't the twelve or the true disciples. These are the crowds that were following him, and that's all they were doing. You have followers in church. You have people that follows the crowd, people that they, they fake it. They fake it for 20 years. They fake it for 80 years. They fake it till they die. But that does not mean that they were bonafide believers in Christ. You have people at the deathbed will say, oh, I know I'm going to be with the Lord. I know that I'm saved. I know. And you see, they don't know Christ. That's why periodically throughout the Pauline's epistle, he says repeatedly, make sure of your election and calling is true. You can get at death doors and still think you are saved and leave this life doomed to an eternal second death, the lake of fire. It's, 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 it's a sad thing. It doesn't matter within that cassock that person is smiling. That's not the proof that, oh, they smile. They're smiling. They must have went to heaven. No. No. The mortuary or whoever made up that, that, that body and putting it in that grip that, and made it up, they did it. It's your faith, re repentance in the Lord Jesus Christ and faith in him. That bona fide faith in him, that true faith, repentance in Christ, allows you to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. And while you're here on this earth, you will continue to live holy and righteous. I did not say sinless, nor did I say perfect. But you will live righteous and holy and godly in the sight of God and people. So the scripture says, What if you see the Son of Man come come ascend up where he was before? What, what if you saw that? See, they're still looking for miracles. Lord, give us as Moses fed the people in the wilderness, he gave them bread. Give us this bread like Moses did, John chapter 8. Jesus says, no, I'm not. I am the living bread. I came down from heaven. And except you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you won't have eternal life. But we want the bread. We want the miracles. We want the tongues. We want... Entertainment, we want feelings, we want to be slain and prove that you are in me. It, First Corinthians says, 12 says, it doesn't work like that. But many church folks who have been seared with a hot iron and thinking that they really are saved, and they're really not. Nevertheless, the foundation of God stands assured 
the Lord knows them that are his. Because you get on that floor and start to shouting and dancing, waving your hands, speaking in tongues, slain in the spirit, doing miracles, preaching and teaching, that is no proof that you are saved. Many of his disciples walked away from Jesus. They, they just got and said, hey, look, I, 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 that I can't take. And they walked away. So you see, this is the reason why even if you grow up in a church and you stay in your family church till you're 110 years old, that is not the proof positive that you are a believer in Christ. Jesus says, if you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. A continuous in the word, in, in, in being a disciple is living holy, living godly, studying and reading the word of God, obeying the masters, confessing of sins in your life, allowing the Holy Spirit to cleanse you daily in your life. See, that's the continuous. See, if you continue in my word, sanctify them through thine word, Thine word is truth, John 15 and 3. All right? So it's a continuation. So all your buddies, all your family members, all your peoples that have gone back and that has given up the church, given up Bible reading, they're back and forth, they're in church and they back out. Every time they get sick or in an accident or go to a hospital or get weary and down or divorced or angry or whatever, they leave the church, then they come back, see, back and forth, back and forth. Jesus says, no, you, it's a continuous. You don't get saved and unsaved, saved and unsaved, saved, backslide, saved, backslide, saved, backslide. It, the scripture doesn't... The Hebrew writer says, we are not one of those that fall back to prediction. Hebrews chapter 10. And then the Hebrew writer says, I am, I am persuaded better things of you. Hebrews chapter 10 again. And what about Hebrews chapter 6? Then 1 John, they, they went out from us. 1 John 2, 18. If they were of us, they will continue. See, John is saying the same thing here. If they were of us, 1 John chapter 2, verse 18, if they were of us, they would have continued with us. So it's sad, and, 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 and truth hurts. But we got to preach and teach truth and let people know that you saying that, oh, I backslide, oh, I'm coming back, or I was carnal, I was a babe in Christ. See, you're using all those unauthorized scripture words which or verses or whatever that that the scripture does not validate as excuses and you say well I'm coming back to church I'm coming back to the Lord well you never you never came to the Lord I mean run through the book of Psalms David says, oh, taste, see it, the Lord, he is sweet. Oh, taste, oh, the Lord is my rock. He's been, and how, how is it that you're saying that you are a Christian and then you're going to untaste yourself? You don't like honey anymore, the honey, which is God. You don't, you don't like the rivers of water running in your life. I would give to them rivers of running water. I'm, and you, for, no, it's no way. So Hebrews chapter 6 is not talking to a born-again believer. It's talking to those that are putting on a front, a show, who is hypocritical. They taste, they endure, they, they, they taste, they were blessed, they were fascinated, they, they went through it, but they never came to the rock. It's going beyond mental, flesh, and emotional believing. Because when you have heart belief, 
you will not leave Christ. It's a continuation. Alright? Now, all that is that introduction to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 in 1 John 4, John chapter 6, John chapter 8, as we go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Now, time is gone here. But notice in the scriptures, he lists a partial, a partial list of gifts in the Spirit. And they must be operated by the same Spirit, the same God, the same Jesus. For the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every believer, but is maintained by the same Spirit, the same Jesus, the same God. 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 12 verses uh, 5 and 6 and 7. So when he lists these, he said, now the gifts of the Spirit are these. In other words, he says the gifts of the Spirit, he says the gifts, for one is given the Spirit, by the Spirit, excuse me, verse 8, for, for to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another, the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, the gifts of healings by the same Spirit. To another, the workings of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. But all the works or the manifestation that one, excuse me, Verse 11, but all these worketh that one and self same Spirit, Jesus, the Father, the Spirit, they're they three in one, they work. See, the Spirit of God does not work against the Son of God. The Son of God cannot work against the Father. And that's why Paul made sure that when he said this, he says, uh, in verse 4, now there are diversities of gift, but the same spirit. There are difference of administration, but the same Lord. There are differences or diversities of operation, but it's the same God. So they don't work contradiction to each other. What we need to realize is that when the gifts of the Spirit is being operated by the Spirit of God, the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit approves of it. And the scripture says in verse 11, But all these work the one and self-same Spirit, dividing to every person severally as he wills, as the Spirit of God wills it. Now, it's no... It's no partiality. You have a group of saints over here that have a particular gifts that the other Christians don't have. Speaking in tongues. Then you have another group over here that say they have a particular gift of walking in a box where there's snakes and they get healed and if they if, if if the snake bite them and they don't die or they won't they believe this, but why can't the Christians in Canada experience that? Why can't the Christians in Nigeria experience slain in the spirit like the Christians over there in California or Hawaii? Why everybody is different, but we see here that the same spirit works within every believer as severally as he wills it. All see you. And, and see, that's the folliness of slain in the spirit, shouting, speaking in tongues, supernatural miracles, all this healing services, and, and, and all this snakes and reptiles and, and, and tempting the doubt God with poisonous snakes and drinking poison and all that. And see, that's the folliness in it that is not authenticated by the word of God. It's not authenticated by the Lord. It's not authenticated by the Spirit. It's not authenticated by the Son. We just, the Father, no part 
no person of the Godhead approves of what's going on in the local church because the church has stepped outside of spiritual things into the realm of the flesh and Satan and label it as the Spirit of God. So in my conclusion here, that's why Paul starts it off in verse 1. Now you know, now concerning spirituals, spiritual gifts, charisma, brethren, he says, he says, he says this, I would not have you to be without understanding. Get some discerning. Know what you're dealing with and who is doing this and who is of God. Understand it. You know you were Gentiles carried away with these dumb idols. See, in a, a, a seance or in a voodoo dance or in a, uh, a, a partying with mysticism and dancing and all that kind of stuff, you, 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 you see it that it's so compatible with what's going on in the church today. So that's why, I'm, I'm, I'm getting ready to close, that's why in chapter 10, in chapter 10, notice what, what Paul says that you, you, you just can't be partakers of the sacrifice of demons, witchcraft, seances, voodoo, spiritualism, and say, oh, that's of God. You know? You, you, you can't do you can't you can't be partakers of that and say, oh, I'm gonna take the Lord's Supper or I'm I'm part of the rock with Jesus Christ. You, the scripture says that you're tempting, you're tempting Christ. You're you're socializing with spiritual stuff that you don't understand is not of God. Is relating to the flesh, is relating to Satan, and you're thinking, you're thinking that it's the Holy Spirit. You know that you were Gentiles carried away with these dumb idols. We we did that in the old life. We read about it, we was educated in it, we accepted it, we, we indulged in it, and then when we get saved, ironically, through the flesh, through Satan, through false teaching. We bring it right into the church. Oh, that's 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 the Holy Spirit. That's that's of God. When seances and voodoos and spiritualism and and, and curses and spells and, and, and mysticism and, and Ouija boards and white magic and black magic and, and shouting and seances and dancing and this and that, the the scripture says No. There's one Lord, one faith. One baptism. There's one Lord, one Father, one Spirit, through you all, by you all, in you all, and it's sanctioned by the Word of God. Now, next week, we're going to look at the meanings of Paul's uh, gifts here. Because, as I close, there was a supernatural miracles, wonders, and healings in the church. I'm not against that. There were. By the, the signs of the apostles were mighty, Paul says. And they worked the work of God through signs. And Paul had aprons and he, he did even the shadow of people, Peter healed people. But let me tell you one thing. It is not happening today. All this visions, seances, and dreams, and spirits, and seeing spirits walk in your room, and anointing the bed posts, the doors, and everything, praying to Mary, the cross, and the blood of Jesus in a picture on a statue, and, 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 and having seances around the table, and, and praying, and, and, and all this speaking, and tongues, and, and, and all that, we have laid, people have labeled it. The Spirit of God. We got to come to an understanding of what and how the Spirit of God manifests Himself among believers.
right, so we're gonna we're gonna look at that uh, next week. The the supernatural ability from God to understand spiritual things, and and how God through the power of the Holy Spirit worked in the early church, and how He is not He is not working that work in the early in the church today. And we see, see through scriptures and proof positive for your understanding and for your learning. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you uh, for the blessedness of the word of God. And we pray, Father, that, that you will help us, the local church. The question is, why is the church is so motivated? so high strung in the spiritual realm in the wrong way the power and the, and the father forgive us of our lackness of the word of God our, 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 our not having discernment not understanding the truths of the word of God awaken us oh God awaken us the church that we will fall before the knees of the master, he who began the church, who knows what's going on, that he will so fill us with his spirit, with the understanding and discernment, that we may come out of such false teachings and false illusions. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we thank and praise God. Sunday morning, amen. God bless. Sunday school is at 9 o'clock. Join us for our children and teen class. Uh, our adult class is at 10 o'clock. Our morning worship is at um, 12, is at 11.30, 11.45, and evening at 5 o'clock. Join us. Christian Bible Chapel on Facebook. God bless. Amen. Amen. God bless everyone. Lord's willing, yeah. we'll be in touch. Okay. All righty. Okay. okay.